Hey everyone, this is Chris Olivas with another episode of The Setup, and in this episode, we are going to talk about the Milky Way core season. Okay, so if you're new to astrophotography or you're just interested in astronomy, um, you may or may not know that the Milky Way core actually is seasonal. It does not come out every single night and it's not out all night for you to see. If you're new to astrophotography you might have started to figure this out if you went out to try to photograph or see the Milky Way in an unlight polluted area. It's not out every single night and it's not in the same place every single night. It's seasonal and it all depends on where you live and uh, what time of year it is if you want to see it. The Milky Way core is that bright, beautiful, nebula filled, dust covered, colorful, big chunk and uh, band in the sky when it's out. This is usually the target for most astrophotographers because it's big, it's beautiful, it's bright, and it's amazing. It really makes images pop at nighttime and it's a lot of fun trying to find alignments with other foreground objects or landscapes with the Milky Way core in mind. Now the Milky Way itself is visible all year long because uh, the Milky Way really is our galaxy. We're in it, so no matter what time of year you can see part of the band. But the core, the center of our Milky Way, is the brightest and biggest part of the sky that, that most people want to shoot to see. So if you imagine uh, we, uh, Earth, our solar system, is kind of an, one of the outer rings of the Milky Way galaxy. So when we see the core, that means that we are looking inside, we are looking into the center of the actual galaxy. We're looking head on as if the galaxy was flat. Therefore, you would see tons and tons of light and dust all lined up with each other from our perspective. They're not all lined up together, really. It's just from our perspective. There still is the band or the outside of the of the of the galaxy that we would see, and we see that during the winter months. Uh, you still see the 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 band of the Milky Way, all the stars that fall within it. Um, there's just not as many because it's kind of the outside of it. So it's kind of like if you're standing in line uh, for a ride. Right? If you were standing straight in that line and you were looking towards the front or if you were towards the back of the line, you're looking towards the front, you see all kinds of people there, it looked crowded, you'd see a lot of like heads. That's kind of like when you're seeing all the stars from the core. If you were to turn around and look at the back of the line and there's very few people behind you, it wouldn't be looking, it wouldn't be looking so crowded. So it's kind of the same idea. Okay, so let's talk about the science of how this viewing uh, is seasonal and how it takes place. First of all, hopefully you know that the Earth travels around the Sun in an orbit every 365.25 days. Now let's think even outside of our orbit around the Sun. There are stars and constellations surrounding us in a three-dimensional uh, pattern all the way. And as we travel around the Sun, we can see different constellations at different times. The sun actually blocks our view from some constellations at different times of year. They're still out there during the day, but they're just aligned with the sun at some points. But there are constellations that we can rely on that most cultures have actually associated with that are uh, pretty cyclical and that we use as markers to mark our months and even the seasons. These are what are called the zodiac constellations. These are constellations like Gemini, Pisces, Cancer, Virgo, all those zodiac, all those horoscope astrology constellations actually have some basis in science because they create a belt around the entire orbit of Earth's path around the sun. It's called the ecliptic and they're seasonal. They only come out for a certain months of the year and then we don't see them any longer. So in our path around the sun, the entire globe has access to the same constellations and the same views. You just might see those views upside down or have less daylight to see them depending on where you are um, away from the equator. But we all are experiencing the same constellations at uh, different times of year uh, because our path around the sun actually physically has our position physically at different locations around the year. And so during the months of December, of November, December, January, our Earth is, is in such a position that all the stars that we see at nighttime are away from the core, uh, away from the Milky Way core. All of the stars that are near the Milky Way core are aligned with the sun. So if you were to have a solar eclipse during the day of the winter, you could potentially see the Milky Way core right there along with the sun. It's kind of cool. Once the Earth makes its way around to the opposite side of its orbit in the months of like June, July, August, we no longer see those winter constellations like uh, Orion 
uh, we see the Milky Way core. We are now on the opposite side of the sun and therefore our nighttime views are pointed towards the core of the Milky Way. And we get to see the beautiful nebula, center of the Milky Way, all kinds of different dust and clouds and all that kind of stuff. If you were to have a solar eclipse during the day of the summer, then looking to the sun, you would be able to see some of the more winter constell or some of the, the other constellations like Orion and that kind of stuff that are only available in uh, December, November, all that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool that we actually as a globe experience the Milky Way core at the same time. Now our perspectives might be different. If you're on the Northern Hemisphere, you're gonna see the Milky Way core in one orientation. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you're gonna see the Milky Way core completely upside down from that perspective, or opposite, I should say. Uh, it's not upside down, it's just a matter of perspective. Now, to get the best views of the Milky Way core during Milky Way core season, here we go. The Milky Way core season lasts from about late February all the way to about late October. The Milky Way core will rise in the east at the wee hours of the morning, I guess, if that's how you want to think of it, um, at the, in the end of February. And it will only rise for a little bit before it gets drowned out by daylight. As the days progress and the Earth moves um, in the position uh, further and further away from its winter location, we start to get a few minutes every single day more of where the Milky Way core will rise earlier. I think it's about like four minutes or something like that. So every single day, it rises a little bit earlier. It's also battling how the days become longer and the sun actually starts to rise a little bit earlier as well. So they both kind of move in parallel. So it's not really the best time to view it around February, April or around February, March, because it's, uh, you know, you're only getting like a half hour or an hour and it's very low in the sky and very horizontal. So it's only about five to 10 degrees above the horizon, which means you can't really line up anything to it. If you've got mountains or buildings or whatever in the way, it doesn't really get above those things. That's above the horizon. Once March and April start to set in, you start to get the Milky Way core rising a little bit more for about, with about an hour to two hours of visibility, which is a great time. That's when the Milky Way core starts at about, uh, about flat and it starts to rise a little bit higher in the sky and it kind of goes up kind of up to like 45 degrees. And as it's doing that, it rises in the east and then kind of makes its way south as it's kind of rising. Very similar to like the way the sun and the moon rise in the east, except for the sun and the moon travel a little bit directly overhead. The Milky Way core stays really in the, in the southern area of the sky if you're from the northern hemisphere. So it'll rise a little bit more earlier each day and it will also become more vertical every single day as it starts making its way towards the west as well. The smack dab middle of the Milky Way core season is in June near the summer solstice and you will have the uh, full path of the Milky Way core starting from the east making its way through the south and into the west. From then on it starts to become a battle of the Milky Way setting uh, before the night is over. So June is the prime time to get all conditions of the Milky Way where you can get it where it's rising nice and flat, where you can get it more at a 45 degree angle if you want to get some good foreground shots or even get a panorama um, and also get that Milky Way when it's vertical straight up and down to the south southwest which is pretty nice. Um, so it continues on this path, starts rising earlier and earlier every single day but that also means that it sets earlier and earlier every single day after that June date. And so from there, it starts to set earlier and earlier all the way until we get to October, November, um, where the core is pretty much setting before, before it's nighttime. So in the months June, July, August, it's really the best time to be capturing the Milky Way core because you get it rising, you get that 45 degree angle, the potential for panoramas and that vertical angle. Um, so it's important to pay attention when you're planning your shots. Um, to stay focused on the time and the position, the time, position, and the elevation of the Milky Way um, so that you can actually map out the foregrounds that you want to be looking at, line it up with, and that you don't miss them. Believe it or not, it moves really fast in the night. If you're taking long exposures, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 20 seconds, track shots, that Milky Way core moves really fast. So it's really important to plan out what you're shooting and when, and actually have your destinations marked out on, on your timeline at night because it moves quick. Uh, before you know it, you think you've got so your subject lined up with the Milky Way, you've got all your settings ready to go, and all of a sudden, it's out of your frame. You're gonna have to restart that. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. Hope you're 
getting ready to capture some awesome Milky Way core photos this season. I know I am pretty excited for it to get started and I hope that you are too. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, let me know down below. Um, please like and subscribe if you want to hear more content, learn more about astrophotography, about astronomy, or about photography. I'd be happy to share. Um, so thanks for tuning in to this episode of The Setup, and we'll hopefully see you out there catching the night sky.